Welcome to church this morning. We're so glad you're with us. Last week we began a study. Uh, we started with Psalm 23 and we were looking at valleys. Everyone goes through valleys. And so th- today we're going to continue in this series that we're in is called Suffering. What is your valley? So uh, over this next little while, we're going to uh, rejoice in Christ. And the worship team, Randy Weaver, will be leading us in worship. Brenda Wright will be reading from the Word. Pastor Nathan is going to lead us in communion. So get, some, get a piece of bread or a wafer and a cup of juice or some water that you can share together when he gets to that part in communion time. And then Ken Wright will be leading us in prayer. So we are going to go to God for this next hour, and we're just going to forget about everything that's happening around us. I want you to pay attention to these next few slides because we've got some important upcoming events we need to tell you about. This year, the theme of our missions convention is moving forward. The missions team is pleased to have Anna Morganti from Winnipeg, Manitoba, as our guest speaker on Sunday, May the 16th at 10 a.m. Anna has a passion to work with the youth at risk in the inner city streets of Winnipeg and surrounding area. Many of these youth are struggling with addictions and loneliness, lack of food and resources. Anna and her team host Bible studies at youth centers, at homes, and also within the church. Anna is also involved in providing hot meals for those uh, in need throughout the community. She has many faithful uh, volunteers to help prepare these meals. And it is only done through the power of loving and giving hearts, moving forward in spite of the restrictions around us. Speaking of giving hearts, as in previous years, we will be taking up a missions offering after this service. Anna will be available live to answer any questions after the service that you might have in regards to her ministry with the youth in the inner city, her goals for the future, etc. Take time before Sunday to think about what you would like to ask her. Thank you for supporting our local and international missions endeavors. And when we give out of the abundance of our hearts, the Lord's favor is upon us. Our annual missions yard sale will take place on Saturday, May 22nd from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at 3 Foster Street, Perth. And that's across from the Cafe Bean. You are encouraged to drop off items the day before the yard sale or contact me at karen at gtpcperth.com or call at 613-812-8541. We are also looking for a few strong men to lift the tables to the front of the house the morning of the sale. The Big Give is taking place on Saturday, June the 5th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We are once again collecting food items to donate to the Lanark Food Pantry. We are looking for a few volunteers to help man the tables and then load the groceries to take out to the Lanark Pantry. We are also encouraging people to bless our frontline workers or people in need in our community with gift cards, such as male personnel, garbage collectors, hairdressers, barbers, guest attendants, grocery personnel, etc. Thank you in advance for your generosity and your time. God's blessing upon you. We continue to host the Youth Alpha series online 8 to 9 p.m. on Tuesday evenings. It's for ages 13 to 18 and anyone who wants to go deeper and know more about their faith in Jesus. If you're interested or if you know somebody who is interested, please contact Pastor Nathan to register at nathan at gtpcperth.com. We want to thank you for your generosity during this season, for your faithfulness to God and His work, that we can continue to do through Glad Tidings. For ways to give, please visit 
gtpcperth.com for all giving options. God bless. Your name. 
for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own, yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. When the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. He said, I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. 
he took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. What a powerful scripture we just read. From the prophet Isaiah, who writes and he says, He was pierced for our rebellion. He was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be made whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. We are going to go into a time of communion together this morning. And even though we're distanced, I pray that in your living room today or wherever you're watching this, we can participate together in one heart, one mind, one spirit through Jesus who unites us. Last week, Pastor Lewis began a sermon series on suffering. And as we go into this time of communion, I want us to remember that Jesus came to this earth, yes, to be the way, the truth, and the life, and to show us the way to the Father. He came to heal the sick and set the captives free and break the chains that hold us captive. He came to give us life and life to the full. But also he came to relate with us in our suffering. That Jesus wasn't above the suffering of this world, but he went through a suffering to the extreme degree upon the cross. He came to show us that even through the trials and the tribulations of life, even through the suffering that we go through, he relates with us and he is with us through it. I love what the Apostle Paul says in the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 10. He says, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him even in death, and so somehow attaining the resurrection from the dead. You see, part of knowing Jesus fully is knowing him for his life-giving power, but also knowing him as, we, as he relates with us through our suffering. So this morning, let's take part in communion together, keeping in mind and remembering what he did for us on the cross until he comes again. The book of 1 Corinthians, Paul writes to the church as he's giving direction and instruction on the Lord's Supper. He says, For I received from the Lord what I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's do that together now. And then it goes on to say, in the same way, he also took the cup after supper. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this. As often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us do that together today.
as Randy leads us in this next song, Build My Life. May we understand that Jesus is our firm foundation, that he is the one we can trust, the one we can stand upon, because he knows everything we go through. We can cast our cares upon him. So let's worship together in this song and may it minister to us this morning.
Good morning, everyone. We praise God for his goodness and his love. And we thank you, Lord, for this day, this beautiful day that you've made for us. And as we open in prayer, Father, we thank you for your love and your goodness. We thank you, Lord, that you never fail us. And Lord, you are a God who hears every prayer. You answer prayers, and Father, you answer them in some mysterious ways. Lord, ways that we don't even, can't even imagine, Lord, how you do this. But God, you are supreme, you are everything. And Lord, as we enter into this uh, time, Father, where we can thank you, God, for the goodness that you have laid upon our hearts and for the way that you have directed us. And Lord, in this, as this 21 days of prayer ended yesterday, Father, we ask, O oh God, that you, Lord, have spoken to people through this time. Lord, as they have taken and as they've spent time reading your word and praying and seeking your guidance and direction, Father, may that they have grown in you, Lord, in this 21 days. And Lord, may they have been strengthened, Father, to a way, Lord, that is unbelievable in their own lives. Father, they will start to see these changes. And God, as they come to you and as they lay this on the altar, Lord, that you are directing and you are keeping. And so, Father, we praise you for this time. We praise you for your goodness. And Lord, it's at this time, Father, that we celebrate uh, the communion, Lord, and we ask, O oh God, for a covering of your blood upon each one of us. We thank you for Calvary. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done for us there. And Lord, how that shed blood washes, cleanses, and purifies us. And Lord, now as we come to you and we bring our missionaries to you, Father, at this time. And Lord, you know the, the hard time, Father, throughout the, the whole world circumstances. And this pen, uh, this... Uh, awful thing with COVID and Lord, the pandemic, Lord, that is so relevant in, in all over the world. Lord, we bring Don and, and uh, Pascal uh, from India, Father, we bring them to you, Lord. And you know, God, that the issue that is there, Father, you know the COVID that is and the uh, uh, different things that are taking place there, Lord, that is is really closing everything down and father the many deaths and lord they are in a dangerous area but god we know that you have them covered with your blood you sent them there for a job to do and father they are bringing that gospel to people lord there's there's a great need there in that country lord for unbelievers and lord the job that you have given them to do father i pray that you will help them and minister to them we pray, Lord, that you would minister to their daughters at home here. And Lord, protect them. And God, as they hold their mom and dad up in prayer, Father, give them strength each day. Lord, when they see the things that have taken place there in India. And Lord, for the, their finances. And Lord, for what the need is as they would desire to build this new building, Lord, that is going to house their, their uh, church, and their youth center and uh, their um, youth ministry that they're going to have. And there's an eye clinic. Lord, this is a big need in India. Father, because there's many poor people. And Lord, they go to the different villages to, to minister to those people. So God, we thank you for them. And we praise you, Jesus. Lord, there's Linda Duncliffe, Lord at uh, Uganda, Africa. And Father, you know the issues that she's having now. And Lord, she's trying to develop a, a leadership program and training for uh, the people, Lord, there. And she, Lord, is praying God for fertile hearts, Lord, that as she sends out her, her uh, literature, Lord, to them. And Lord, as they take hold, I pray God that you would just minister and, and direct there and Father, that you would comfort them, comfort her, Father. Because this is a, another place, Lord Jesus, when you're by yourself. And yes, you've got Christian brothers and sisters there. But Lord, there's always that need of, of the family, Lord, to encourage you. But the Christian brothers and sisters are encouraging her. 
And Lord, give her strength and health for body, mind, and spirit. And Lord, that you will minister each day. And Lord, may she sense that presence of Almighty God keeping her and directing her. Lord, there's the Brian and Val uh, Rotten in Ethiopia. And Lord, we're praying for protection for them. We're praying for direction in finances. And Lord, as they, they're they more into a place, Lord, that is, is not as hostile in some ways as the other places are. But God, you are one who cares about them and you're gonna meet each need and you're gonna direct them. Lord, there's the uh, Scott and Melissa and their children in Barcelona, Spain. Father, we pray, Lord, that you would be with them. And Lord, as they transitioned from El Salvador, where they'd been for over 13 years, and Lord, we ask God that you would be with them as they adjust into this new area, Lord, in where they're gonna minister, where God has called them to be everything there. And so, Lord, give them the strength, give them the peace and the patience. And Father, be with their children, Lord, as they will start to train and learn in a different area. And so, Lord, let the light of Christ shine in them and use them, Lord, in your name. And Lord, we pray, Father, for uh, Anna Morgan and uh, ministering in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Lord, that you would be with her. Father, she's got a heart for the youth She's got a heart for the, the uh, children. And Lord, it's not for this, right for this generation, but it's for the ones that's coming up. Lord, these young kids, she's one de desiring to train them. She's desiring, Lord, that they will come to know you as Lord and Savior. And God, that you will minister to them, Father. Minister to her, through her, Lord. She's a, a vessel of yours. And Father, when we are your children, Lord, you, you work and you use us and you direct us. And Lord, there's also the Aboriginal reserves, Lord, that is around there. And there's quite a number of them. And Father, I pray that you'd be with her, Lord, as she goes out in the district, in the areas, Lord, there. And Father starts to work with these people and Lord, to help them through the crisis that they face. Lord, there's, there's many issues, Lord, in those uh, reserves, Lord, that uh, we don't know why they happen, but God, you know everything. And Father, you know, the families, Lord, some of them that know you, some of them don't. But Lord, that you will, Father, will have your way. And Lord, as we continue in this service, Lord, as the word of God comes forth, as the power of the Holy Spirit works and directs, God, that you will minister to the pastor, and Lord, that you will direct in the leadership of this church, and Lord, that you will minister to our board, Lord, each one. Father, we've come through troubled times but Lord we know God that you never change you're always the same and Father you are giving us that peace daily and we stand upon the promises that you have given us in your word Lord for you are an awesome God you're a loving God and you care and we thank you in your name Lord amen We've started a new series on suffering, asking the question, what is your valley? Last week in, our, in the opening message, we, we discovered that valleys are universal to all people, all walks of life from time past, time present, and time forward. Everyone will experience dark valleys, everyone. Okay, so stick with me. This message isn't gonna be all doom and gloom. Okay, so uh, hang in there. <laughs> Some people believe, however, that Christ followers should not be under a curse of, of valleys, uh, but they should just be walking on mountaintops all the time, or at least jumping from one mountaintop to the next to avoid the valleys. Um, but since Christ left this earth to return to his Father in heaven, uh, Christians have tried to promote that kind of thinking uh, to their own folly, really. Um, there are saints who have died, Actually, everyone who has lived has died. Um, uh, and, and this is without exception. Only, only two men, Elijah and Enoch, 
are recorded in the Old Testament as not having died physical deaths. Uh, and, and you could read about those in the Old Testament. Fascinating stories. Yet some Christians argue that real Christ followers should only die of natural causes without any suffering. Um, not by disease or illness or, or in accidents or by accident or martyrdom. But the, the writer of Hebrews proves that wrong. Hebrews 10, 35 to 40, where he writes about many God-fearing people who were martyred. And personally, I have known many saints who have died in accidents um, and my illness. And, and not to judge their faith. I, I can't judge their faith in, as some would and say, oh, they didn't have enough faith. All Christians suffer. So can we, so can we ask the bigger questions here? Why do Christ's followers suffer? Uh, is, is there any reason that can help us make sense of the valleys that we go through, um, the trials that we face, or, or at best, even the small challenges that we come up against each and every day? Why does God say that he is love if he allows suffering? Why do good people suffer? Why isn't suffering just reserved for the bad people? Um, you know, like, and do Christ's followers have to suffer? Like, Jesus died on the cross. We just... We celebrated communion. Pastor Nathan led us through that. And Jesus suffered for us, so shouldn't we be free from suffering? But, but even if you understand it, what's worse is, is when we could accept that we all have to go through valleys, and we want to know that God's presence is with us. We want to feel his presence with us as we go through, and we want to trust that he hears our prayers when we pray and plead to him. And in the middle of the dark valleys, we may really wonder if he cares, if he hears us. And so even when we have hope and hurt, sometimes it's the hurt that shouts the loudest. Haven't you found that to be true? Here's a truth that we all know, because we all have experienced it, that suffering produces results of great value. From the first seeds we planted as an experiment in grade school, we learned that a seed has to die before it can grow into a plant. To the first crush that you had in school that broke your heart. And then people all around us said those great words of Lord Tennyson. He wrote in the poem, uh, it's better to have loved and lost than to have not loved at all. And oh, the anguish that that brought. But we learned great value in how to treat relationships going forward from there. One of the things of great value that suffering produces is character. Romans 5, verses 3 to 4 reads, Not only so, but we also glory in our suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. That helps me a lot. But, but let's explore a few reasons why we suffer. Why there are valley experiences in life for this character to be developed in. The first reason is there is suffering because the curse that brought suffering into the world has not yet been reversed. Sin brought a curse on Adam and Eve, which has been passed down to us. Romans 5 verse 12 says, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people, because all sinned. But God sent his son Jesus to pay the price for our sin. The penalty of our sin was death. Romans 5.10 says, While we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. The curse placed on this earth will be reversed, but it's not completed yet. Only in heaven will the full effect of Jesus' death be complete. In, Re in Revelation 22, verse 3, it says, Then there will no longer be any curse. You see, we still wrestle with weeds in our gardens. 
Actually, Paul said in Romans 8, 19 to 21, for the creation awaits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. It's true that on the cross, Jesus said, it is finished, signifying that the price was paid in full for the forgiveness of our sin. The purchase of our salvation was complete, but the results of salvation were just beginning to be fully realized at that moment and still aren't fully realized yet. You and I both know that sometimes we still sin. Everything needed for the forgiveness of my sin has been complete. But the completeness of that forgiveness is yet to be fully realized. Now, many times we see miracles that change our dry valleys into rich pasture lands. And oh, praise God for that. We need that. We need those times to increase our strength and our faith to give us hope. However, there are times we will not come out of the valley unscathed. And it's because we live in a time of in-between. Jesus began and ushered in the kingdom. However, it is still being processed. We're in this in-between part. It's still being established in my life and in the world. Easter weekend was a month ago where we celebrated Jesus' death and resurrection. In those acts, he dealt Satan a fatal blow, assuring that Satan's destruction was complete. And the resurrection of all people was also assured in that. And the new heaven and new earth that would be free from suffering, as we read in Revelation 22. All those things were assured. And Paul even talked about it in Romans 8 that we just read, how, how all of creation is waiting for suffering to end. So how was Satan defeated by Jesus' death and resurrection? The Bible teaches that through his death and resurrection, we were made right before God. There's a theological term for that that we use in the church called justification. But it means that we were made right with God. Now let me give you three quick um, teachings that, that the Bible uh, gives us uh, that are theological truths that happened when Jesus died and rose from the grave. We were justified. We were made right with God, ensuring that we no longer are his enemies because of our sin. And you can find that in Romans 5, verses 1, verse 10. And we were also made right with God, freeing us from enslavement to our sin. Romans 6, 6 and 7, 17 to 18, teach us that. And thirdly, we were made right with God, guaranteeing our future resurrection to eternal life. Romans 6, 22 to 23. At the cross, the outcome was assured. But it is still being worked out until Jesus returns to earth. That Teaching is in Revelation chapter 19. So there is still suffering in the world. There are still people, good people and bad people. Uh, there are still innocent people. There are infants. There are, there's the young and the elderly people who suffer. And yes, even earth itself suffers. God's kingdom is present in the world. Yet the curse of sin, along with suffering, is yet to be completely reversed. So allow me to make this more concrete with an illustration from World War II. As the Allies um, tightened the noose on, on Hitler, many supporters 
uh, in his ranks urged him to stop the war as it was already lost. <clears throat> the Allies were now able to see victory in sight, yet victory wasn't there yet until Germany surrendered. The movie Saving Private Ryan uh, was set in June 1994, at the beginning of the end of the war when the Allies made their assault. Yet the war only ended 11 months later. But they had hope in that moment, and it gave them hope and pushed them through the next 11 months to get to May 8, 1945, when Germany finally signed the surrender. So it is with the dark valleys we walk through on earth. The death and resurrection of Jesus initiated the kingdom where there would be no more suffering. Yet, we will only see that when Satan is bound and thrown into the lake of fire. So here is the good news. I want you to know that one of the weapons that we use in this in-between time that we live is praise. When you're in your valley, you can praise God. Speak out loud praises, verbalize it. Praise God that he is with you in that valley. No matter what valley you face, no matter the situation you find yourself in, no matter if you are climbing out of a valley or if you are feeling like you are descending into a valley, whether that valley is financial in nature or it's illness and health related or whether it's just because of this whole entire lockdown that we are in and the, the loneliness that is gripping your heart, whatever your valley is, know that Jesus is with you and you can praise him through this valley that you are in. Jesus has won the battle even though we have to fight still on this earth. And so we fight on against Satan, knowing that the outcome is already secured. We are living in this in-between. Do you feel a little overwhelmed? Could you really use some help? Right now, do you feel like it is well with your soul? Remember, you are in the in-between, the place where Jesus has won the victory, yet the enemy is still attacking you in the valley. Remember last week, we learned that God's with us in that valley, uh, the very dark valley. His rod is in one hand, his staff is in the other, and, and he is guarding us with his rod and guiding us with his staff. He is with us. You are not alone. You can praise him for that. You can rejoice, give thanksgiving to God that you are not alone in your valley, no matter how isolated, no matter how alone you may feel. God is with you. The one who purchased your soul at a very high price is there to help you get through that valley. He is there to see you through to the completion and to victory. He stands up while you are getting pushed down. He bends over to lift you up. Psalm 91 verse 2 says, You are my place of safety and protection. You are my God and I trust you. He runs ahead of you to keep you from falling. He stands behind you to, to catch you if you should faint from the pressure of the valley you are in. Psalm 91 verses 11 and 12 say, He has put his angels in charge of you to watch over you wherever you go. They will catch you in their hands so that you will not hit your foot on the rock. You will live through this. Praise God for that. Because He is with you and He comforts you. He carries you. He is with you in this dark valley that you are facing. Church, as we conclude this morning, I want you to know this. Every valley is there because the full effect of the curse has not been reversed. We live in 
the in-between from when it was started to when it will end and full victory will be seen. But the one who has won the victory is for you and is with you to help you through the valley in the in-between. So I'm going to ask, as we end this service, for you to praise God. Rejoice in the fact that he is with you in the in-between. I want everyone watching to praise God with something about him being with you in the in-between. So you could say something like, I'm glad I have Jesus in the in-between. Or you can say, I am thankful that he is walking with me. Or you can say, I'm thankful to know his presence is with me in the valley of COVID-19. In just a moment, say something like this out loud so others can hear you. Give everyone a chance in your room who's watching with you an opportunity to praise God for something. Don't be afraid to say it out loud uh, in front of the other people that you're with. Uh, like we've done this in the church many times when we met. I've asked us all to look to our neighbor and say something. Just, just, just say something to the people you're with. Praise God for the way he is with you in this valley. Parents, you need to model this for your children and have them try to say something as well. Spouses, you need to say it to each other. Or, or maybe you could text a friend or even, even write it in the chat um, that's on the side here, uh, this side or, or that's I'm not sure what side it's on. If you're alone at home, text somebody, chat. Let people know that you are praising God even though you are in the valley, in the in-between time. Or, or maybe you can call someone, email someone. Let them know you just watched the service and, and in that service you were challenged to praise God in the valley that you are facing. Because right now, we are living in the in-between. I want to thank all of you for being at church this morning with us and for going through this exercise. So I'm going to close in prayer and then I would like you to do just that, to speak out loud praises to God because he is with you in the in-between. So with God's power working in us, God can do much more than anything we ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus for all time, forever and ever. Amen. Go ahead. Give praise to God. Jesus, I am so thankful that you are with me in my in-between. Thank you that you're walking with me. Thank you that you're going into the dark valley with me. Thank you that you're giving me wisdom as I walk through this valley. Thank you that you are not leaving me, that you are coming.